Hey everyone, happy 2020. Happy Welcome 2020. back to the Freddie and Alyssa show. It's our first episode of 2020. I We're know. very, very excited. And uh, today's episode is sponsored by CBD for Life. Uh, if you've seen the last few episodes, we've been talking and featuring some of their products. And today we have the roll on oil. I know that you've yes. used that one. Do you want to take it away and Y'all, share a little about that? I've been living for this roll on lavender CBD oil. And what's really cool for it is I love the size because as a woman, I can throw it right in my bag. And anytime I'm out and about, if I'm feeling an ache or pain, like in my back, um, my ankle, I just take this off, roll it on. It smells so good. Smell how good that is. It's really good. And it immediately helps and aids in the pain that I'm having. So I've been living for this product in particular. It's one of my absolute favorites. The size is perfect. And take it with you anywhere. So it's been a lot of fun. It's really great. And, and the CBD has been really awesome. And for those of you, too, who are wondering, it is THC free. Yes. Um, it's been third party tested. So it's uh, it's great. And if you want to try some for yourself, you can go to cbdforlife.us. That's C-B-D-F-O-R-L-I-F-E dot U-S. And use the code FREDDIEALISSA20 and get yourself 20% off. And you can try. They have a lot of different products there, so you can give them a try. Um, but we're really excited for you to check out today's episode. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Give the video a like if you like our podcast. It really goes a long way. Uh, so we appreciate you. Now, enjoy the episode. Are you having a laugh? Having a laugh. You know, that's the uh, Ricky Gervais is hosting. He's actually going to be on in about an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> Well, we should watch his opening monologue and then let the whole rest of it record so we can fast forward. I hate watching live. All the commercials. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so we'll do... I want to at least watch his monologue and... uh, He's the best. It's going to be great, yeah. Um, You've been watching his show, what, Extras? Extras. Mm Mm-hmm. I watched a couple apps. It's funny. Oh, yeah. What's the premise of... He just starts off as an extra, I think, the whole first film or the first season... And then he gets um, one of his shows bought, and then he's the star of a sitcom. Then he kind of gets get caught up in being famous, but then wants more out of life than just fame and money. Um, and he wants to be taken as a serious actor, but it's not working. So then he like, you know, it's just it's just really funny. But it's he's telling, you know, a Ricky Gervais story. He's just great. So ever since I heard he was the host, I've been catching up on all his stuff and he's just rewatching funny. his stand ups, and he's so good really good so i can't wait for that um but um but happy 2020 to everyone who's watching can you believe that we're here yeah we're in 20s baby i know That's uh so, crazy. someone said we're actually closer now to 2050 than we are 1990 oh my gosh so there's no more that's actually really good for us there's no more looking back it's good to learn from experiences sure. but that's so far away now it's more important to think about how things are gonna be in 2050 mm-hmm. than how things were in 1990 it's so far away 2050 is right right here what do you think 2050 is gonna look like i don't know how can we even it, you almost can't think too much it. about it because there's just so much going on in today's world and i think we realize that i'm curious your take on taking two weeks off from uh from social like what yes. your opinion is on that but before you do you want to um I, I can't you... watch him out of the corner of my eye lick his paws <laughs> I'd get up, but you were closer. I'm closer. Okay. And you'll probably hold them. Oh, there we go. See Alyssa for the save. <laughs> um, no, what I was going to say about thinking about 2050, imagine being in 1990 and all of the things we have now, it's that same question. So everyone in 1990, there was no internet, no social media platforms, no email. You know Nothing that is our life today is... Yeah. Like material wise, medical wise, technology wise, um, wasn't wasn't here. And then I don't know when they made DVD players, but last night we wanted to watch Bombshell because as part of SAG you get all the screeners. Mm-hmm. And I remember back in the day we'd be so excited to get the DVDs and we'd throw them in the DVD player. And I was opening the mail yesterday and I saw Bombshell and I was like, I really want to watch this, but we don't have a DVD player. Mm-mm. And so, luckily, they started streaming it, and you figure that out, but it just, I mean, it's crazy. I actually thought about, um, before I figured out we could stream it, I was like, what if I just go knock across the, the hall huh. and just say, hey, can you borrow, but then I would realize if they had a DVD player, it was going to be hooked up behind their entertainment center, That'd and it would have been a project, thing. so I didn't even, like, bring it up. But I was thinking, how funny is it in 2020, you're knocking on a neighbor's door saying, do you have a, a DVD or Blu-ray player I can Not borrow? Not sugar. Not sugar, yeah. <laughs> huh. Sugar, you have Postmates, that'll bring it. 
Interesting. Can't, can't have someone bring you a DVD player. But yeah, we figured it out um, and we got to watch it. I'm glad it's continuing to shed light sure. on um, sexual harassment and misconduct in the workplace. But um, I feel like there were some holes. There was something. In it. Yeah, something. I just I don't know. I think um, and this is just my opinion. I mean, who am I? I'm not a filmmaker with all these A-listers in there. But as an audience right. member yeah. that they're making it for, um, I didn't um, wasn't that riveted. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree. it was kind of fell I flat agree. for me. And then when it ended, I was like, oh, that's it. It just almost felt like. Well, we came off the back of watching the morning show, which was similar. And they well, they had 10 it. hours. They, Bombshell had an hour and 40. Um, but the morning show, I was into it within the first five minutes. Yeah. You know, the first three episodes, three hours, I, I, I was hooked. First hour. It was, I was hooked. so it was good. Amazing. It was so good. If anyone, uh, the morning show is so good. So good. If you're looking for a good binge watch, and it's interesting about important subject matter and they did it in a really great beautiful way you know because it's yep it's intense but it was so good and oh my gosh speaking of intense remember don't f with cats on netflix yeah that was crazy it was while you were in it but i'm hesitant to recommend it it, Listen, it's it was it was. I'm happy. Yeah, no, I'm not happy. I watched it. I just well, was, yeah, but I was just so um, I had no idea what I was getting myself into because mm-hmm. basically they follow this group of individuals who are searching for an internet killer, essentially. And that's what it's really about. Yes, it's you. You think it's not, it's not much. There's some. They don't show too much about the killing of the cats, which I know you hid your. Yeah, it I was, couldn't watch. That. It was still enough to really make your stomach turn, but not enough that was like morbid. Right. Like they were very smart in the documentary to show it just enough of what went on. Um, but it's really about the community and how powerful the internet is of yeah. how you can use social media, Google Maps to hunt down an internet killer. Um, but if there's you enough like twist true in crime. Mm-hmm. It, it, I just couldn't believe what I was watching. I just had no idea sitting down that that's what it was going to be yeah. about. And it was three hours of just, holy cow, what am I watching? But, I don't We know. did a lot. We've caught up on so much. Yeah. Like It's been nice. We kind of have unplugged a bit. But it's because I didn't feel guilty unplugging because of the time of year. Mm-hmm. If I was telling you this, if we would be, if we would have been watching this much TV or been unplugged from like working on stuff, I, I feel yeah. guilty if it was a random week in April. The <laughs> fact that everyone's unplugged for the holiday and then that awkward week of like New Year's where everyone's kind of off, kind of not off, I felt okay just sitting in bed or on the couch watching TV and not accomplishing anything other than like, but I did accomplish something because I felt like. I was able to get a clear idea of what I want to spend my time doing. Yeah. We kind of have a lot of things on our plate and we had to prioritize. And I think we had a few and the price is right. We would have got the buzzer. We almost (laughs) had all of the prices lined up, but there was a few that were off and we needed to run back and forth and change them. So I feel, um, but before I get into like our new year's resolutions and like what our plans are and priorities and all of that, um, what did you gain? Because we've never really taken two weeks off especially since we've been this consumed in content creation for three years now. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think we've ever taken two weeks off of, you know, we did a couple TikToks and stuff, but those are easy. I think I've taken a solid week off that I've gone dark. And not just in the sense of not posting. I truly, I've tried very, very hard to not be on the different platforms. There's one thing of not posting, but there's another if you're still on it. I just knew that I wanted a week yeah. of let's just like live in the present. Let's really figure out what we want this upcoming year. And I think it's so important because we're always so consumed in what's going on and what's here, what's happening here. Oh my gosh. And there's so much yeah. that we're constantly having thrown at us, you know? That's interesting. You're right. Because the consumption of the content is what was um, elite, was um, re- relaxing and rewarding was sure. not consuming yes. content. Yes. You're right. The posting content isn't what creates no. emotion in the sense of it is in the sense because we're not the type. Um, if you watch me on Instagram or even yourself, we very rarely and some people do this, but it's like people can do whatever they want. But for me personally, I don't like just posting one story. Right. I like if I'm going to do social media today, I want someone who who is with me at 10 a.m. or 8 a.m 
to follow my day. Or if you catch up later, you can go, oh, this was his two minute story of the day, not just one picture of me holding a pen on my story. And people are like, well, what was that? I like to tell a story in my story. And that does take work and it takes taking yourself out of the moment. You know, even when me and my dad were building that um, that frame, Mm -hmm. I was shooting all that video for TikTok and it it was annoying. Like I had to take my out of that and go do this again and do, you know, all that kind of stuff and then edit it and do the whole thing where it takes you out of the moment. So well, to add on to that real quick, today was the first day I've been back on Instagram and it was just um, when I was getting my nails done. And a big thing on TikTok that I love to do is take video of the different nail colors I'm looking at and ask, you know, which one do you like? And it always is really engaging, you know, and I get to hear and see um, from those, everyone on that platform. And I was sitting there in the chair today and I'm like, man, it's so nice to be relaxed here. And then I go, oh no, I have to get that video for TikTok. So I was telling the lady, I'm like, oh yeah, hold on a sec before you start. I need, cause I need my hands and I'm sitting there trying to record everything. And it just totally took me out of that relaxation moment Mm -hmm. but then once I got it I go okay I feel accomplished I'll edit that later I'm glad I got it now I can relax it was just so interesting to see because I hadn't done it in a week but see that that, I think that's the trade-off of I'd love to have a discussion with somebody who's an avid um social media uh who doesn't have it linked to some sort of career or because that's the whole thing it's like yeah because you have the luxury of working from home being a content creator you do lose some relaxation or moments to have the freedom to work you work longer hours than a nine to five but it's on your own accord there is no one telling you what to do you can take a break if you want but then you miss the moments. I feel like if you have a job that allows you to go and do your work for four hours, 10 hours, eight hours, whatever it is, and then you don't have to, if you're lucky enough to have a job, you don't have to bring your work home. You get to clock out like serving, you don't bring your work home. When I was done, it was the last thing on my mind. There was no prepping. There, once you learned it, yeah. you just show in, clock yeah. in, clock out, and you don't have to bring your work home. Then you're able to be present. But I'm interested in, in people sharing their lives. But I guess with their with their friends, people want to share. Because I wish that some of my friends in high school, it, it, it bothers me that selfishly, and people are going to say, well, just pick up the phone and, and talk. Um, but We're it, millennials. But it's the new, <laughs> it's the new, um, it's the new way. The new way. Like, I would yeah. love to just like, be able to see a couple of my friends or them to be able to see what I'm doing and yeah. communicate and say, oh, they're they're at the Ohio State game today or, oh, they just bought a house or, you, you know, like we would, yeah. I feel like we would end up being closer because there's so much more dialogue happening in the DM on Instagram with friends and family yeah. than it is on the phone. That's where I connect on the with phone. everyone. I have friends from high school who have had so many different kids and some of them now are like six, seven years old, but I've watched all their stories because they post. Yeah. And I feel like I know all of their kids and I've never met them. And it's that kind of part, like that part of social to me is really cool. Cause I feel like I know what's going on in their life as opposed to if there was no social media, who would I really talk to because we live so far? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I I think the more now that we, we t- only took off a couple weeks, um, but it kind of opened my eyes that social media is new to all of us, all different ages. Yeah. We don't know what it's going to do. Posi- there's going to be positive and negatives sure. to the young kids using it. There already are statistics about that. There's positive and negatives for us. Um, but I think it, it's the same as like drinking alcohol or gambling. Um, you know, I think it needs to be done in moderation. Yeah. And you'll be fine. I agree. And so that I think that's something that I, I want to um, I want to post more than ever mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. That's one of our priorities of creating. We've already created a ton last year. We did a really good job, but I think we can times two it. Um, double down, baby. But I want to double down on the producing, but mm-hmm. cut in half the consumption. Yes. And Absolutely. force myself to only consume on a platform like TikTok because you need to know the what's going yeah. on to make the viral videos there. Or you on YouTube, I use it as complete educational. It's very rare that I'm ever on YouTube watching. YouTube's mostly educational. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's other stuff on there's there, but I, I watch like too. a lot of uh, just educational stuff. And um, and that's gonna be one of our top priorities too, is, is 
we slowly are getting into YouTube. Mm -hmm. But I, I just feel like we have so much more to say and do. And uh, not only the podcast, but longer full-length videos where people's mindsets on YouTube are to consume video. You can't put a seven-minute video on Instagram. People aren't going to watch it. I've never, maybe three times I've ever watched a seven-minute video on Instagram. A few times I'll click to go to IGTV, but I'm not on IG to watch long watch, videos. No, I'm there to just see what's going on, scroll yeah. quickly, fast, fast, fast. And see all of that. If I that. go to YouTube, I'm down to watch. If I go to TikTok, I know it's going to be short and interesting, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay if I'm going to be on it for a while. Like, even today was the first time I was actually consuming on TikTok in a minute, and... I enjoyed it so much because it was my form of entertainment, but I was on it for like five minutes. Yeah. You know, and I was like, okay. Yeah, you know it's when it's too much. I feel like it's time. If you have <laughs> just one mini Snicker bar, you're appreciative. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. It's only 80 calories. Yeah. It's delicious. But then when you look at your nightstand after four hours <laughs> of binge watching and there's 12 wrappers... It that. now has been ruined. It's if you're problem. on TikTok for three hours, it's a problem. Yes. If you're on there for 15 minutes and yeah. you get a boost of happiness and laugh, yeah. make a quick video. So it's just it's, it's just, just the moderation is yeah. what needs to be um And it, it's just done. people's new form of entertainment. You know, when you're going back to just a nine to five with no social media and you come home and you unplug, are people reading? Are they working on a hobby? Are they working on a side hustle? Are they watching TV? Like whatever it is, that's what social media has become. So people watch their shows on YouTube or even Facebook Watch is a little bit more popular. Still not, I mean, it's got a long way to go. Or, or Netflix or Hulu or anything. HBO Go, yeah, it's all there. All of it. All of that's the same. Yeah. And it's just, what's your escapism? What do you like? Yeah. What are people doing? And there's so many good things these days. Oh, so I spend... Many. I, the reason I haven't watched so many movies like I used to is because I'm hooked on so many podcasts, and that's mm -hmm. how I unwind. I will love it. There's times I've watched a three-hour Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, I know. Or I'm up and down. Like I'll watch some or yeah. listen and go do other things and whatever. Um, that's a great segue. Uh, the Apple Watch finally pulled the trigger. Well, Mio did and bought me one. Um, <laughs> it's incredible because I used to do the steps on my cell phone, and you don't realize how much your cell phone, even though I'm with it all the time, yeah. that it's not like all this movement is burning calories, but it's not being recorded. I know. And all the times I get up to go to the bathroom, I'm not going to bring my phone. Some people, yeah. that's their yeah. their moment when the phone on the bathroom. <laughs> Mine's not. Um, but all these movements, and I've realized how many more calories I'm actually burning. And it's and they have like this little activity wheel. And it's really cool. So I'm 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 going to use this as my um, as my go to uh, because this year I I have to put health and have the past yeah. five days um, yeah. starting 2020 at the top of my priority list yeah. above everything else. Yeah. Um, I feel for me you're you've kind of just always been good. Like you kind of no one really probably ever notices any difference because you're just only like five pounds up, five pounds down. But still, it's like even for me, I've really been taking my personal um, or my physical therapy serious. Yeah, even going a lot. A yeah. lot. And I've made even more appointments like three times a week because I don't want any injuries ever. I want to keep my body healthy. Well, because you never finished your physical therapy after the accident. So you lost range of motion in your ankle, yep. which when you run causes problems in your back. And, and so now they're fixing my that. therapist was saying, it's like your ankle can be causing the back pain too. So I've been working on it. Everything's feeling so good, but it really stems from that ankle. So I'm working hard to get it where it needs to go so we can keep working hard on the running. I want to get back to really long distance. Me too. You know, that would be really cool. But I think we're just taking everything a step at a time as we should be. So there are no injuries. So we stay healthy, stay consistent and um, just feel good. And also even like mental health. And that's what I've noticed with the pausing of social media, like meditating, feeling good, doing affirmations, being in nature, outside, in the sunshine, by the ocean, whatever it is. I just think all those things are really important because in this, in 2020, there's so much going on and you can't just shut your door and hide from it. You can't do that anymore. You're always going to find out what's happening. And I think more than ever, it's just so important to take time for your mental health and to take time for yourself. And I get the mental health days now. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's been more of a newer thing within culture in what the past five years that people talk about it. Yeah. But it's because there are platforms now for people to connect about this kind of stuff. So just making sure you feel good and you're doing what makes you happy. I mean, I think that's the most important thing for 2020. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it, The lid has now come off. Mm-hmm. And I think people are more comfortable talking about things. Like we all kind of just got on these platforms and everyone's like screaming. And there's still a lot of screaming going on. Sure. But um, it's all kind of the dust is going to settle in the next couple mm-hmm. years. And, and we live in this new world. And I still think there's a, a group of, of people, um, mainly like an older generation, that uh, I don't think has can, – has they have cell phones. They use it. Yeah. But even like when my parents were here, like they use their cell phones as cell phones. Yeah. Like they text. Yeah. They did take pictures and videos to show yeah. their friends when we took them on like – to run in Canyon funny, and stuff. It's not to send to their friends. It's not to post. No, on they're going to show it yeah, to them in person. In person. <laughs> so it's just funny how they have it. They know how to use the FaceTime and send yeah. to, but, but that's, you're using 3% of what this really is. And mm-hmm. I still think that's why there's a lot of people too who are like, oh, all these kids these days or what do they have to be depressed about? Everything's so good. It's like, but we are constantly, mm-hmm. I can feel the night and day difference of I didn't know subliminally like or subconsciously like how much when you look at all your friends and all your idols or mentors on social media and you realize like I just every day I go on there not only am I inspired but if you stay too long you you, the inspiration starts to go away and you start going well I'm inspired well then this person and you just realize like I have so much work to do yeah and And you're like why even do it yeah it's just like the list is so big I'm just like yeah f it um, so it, it's like this weird balance, but I think we're all coming together and we're starting to understand it. Positive vibes for 2020. Um, but that's the top of my list is that before I, I felt like my health and exercise was like fourth. Mm-hmm. So if the top three weren't complete, I wouldn't get to number four. I want to live and breathe and wake up. Yeah. And my, my whole point of life is to be healthy mm-hmm. and then number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten. And that's going to serve both of us very well as we continue to grow older because handling it now and taking care of ourselves now, which we've always taken care of ourselves, but I think we both are really just in the mindset of understanding and getting a little bit older that, I mean, this is our vessel, you know, it's our temple, it's everything. And without it working properly, it's going to cause problems later. Yeah. So we're going to be healthy. And speaking of 2020, do you know it starts tomorrow? No. No. Kirby Enthusiasm starts this month, though. <gasps> really? Mm-hmm. What starts tomorrow? The Bachelor with Pete the Pilot. Oh, really? Yeah. That's tomorrow? Yeah. A lot of people weren't excited, but I loved Pete the Pilot. I just feel like we just watched, like, a season, and I'm ago. just like, oh. We're over it now? Oh, I'll have to watch it then. I mean, I'm... I'll probably check it out. <laughs> you know, you'll check it out in 10 minutes, and he'll be like, oh, my gosh, this is so good. <laughs> I'll check it out. <laughs> you Ooh. always get hooked to the shows I share with you. They're just good. I mean, it's just, it's it's like, a, you know, it's a, I just love, I look forward to it. I get it. I love yeah. it. I love just like, you know, getting everything. Well, and another thing that we're we're thinking about, um, about launching that I, I want to try this week and get a rhythm before I go back to work um, is we, we kind of want to do this, this hot topics portion because we want to make more videos, but... You can't just podcast an hour every day. It just seems like, A, the super fan's not going to be able to consume five hours a week sure. of this or being able to book guests or whatever it may be. Um, but we have so much that we want to commentate on. Yeah. Like I feel like we're really, really pop culture people and they don't get to really – people don't sure. talk about it often because it just seems like – well, when we have guests on, it's about them, and that's the most important thing. You yeah. Know? And I'm not going to bring up a ton of pop culture. But in our or daily just things life, that yeah. are going on. Yeah, like, we're anything. really consuming, like, so much. What's like, happening in the world. Yeah. What's happening in the world from, from politics to news to to new inventions to new science to, to like, celebrities to pop culture to entertainment to cinema to television to yeah. all of this stuff. Music. So we, we want to start some sort of um, – It'll be cool to look back on this if it ends up being like something we really yeah. stick to uh, and enjoy and it, and it gets big. Uh, we want to make the Freddie and Alyssa show like hot topic edition where we kind of do like three times a week, like a 10 to 15 minute video um, where we're here at the table, but talking about 
what's going on. Like kind of doing our own little journalism yeah. of um, staying away 99.9% of the time from politics. Right. But but journalism in the sense of like, oh, this is what's going on. Here's the stories. Um, like the Coachella lineup we talked about. Right. Like like that would be something that could also be discovered on YouTube. Yep. Because we want to provide, um, essentially this is how, how we're looking at it, is is the hot topics, the 10 to 15 minutes of things that are hot in the news that people are talking about are going to help us create width yep. and and reach a larger audience because people are going to be looking up the Cybertruck. They're going to be looking up Coachella. They're going to be looking up the Golden Globe nominees. They're going to be looking up The Bachelor. They're going to be looking up you know, what, uh, whatever's happening in the world. That's going to generate new eyeballs. Yep. But then the Fred and Alyssa show, the conversation is going to continue to build depth where our fans and followers and people who've been following us get to really know us and these people who might stumble across our our you know coachella 2020 lineup 10 yeah. minute video then they go oh, who, are, who are these people and then they have a podcast to get to know us on a deeper level where we just aren't have anything written down yeah. it's just all improv but the journalism po- portion of it i think communicating stories is something i would really enjoy doing Absolutely. and it would allow us to produce more content and really build this YouTube platform yeah, because it's just time. It is. And I think more than ever, people now have so many options to choose how they want to absorb and get their current events, what's happening in the world, you yeah. know, what's going on. And we just thought, how cool would it be for us to throw ours out there and, you know, start just building and meeting and having everyone come together. And it just would be really cool. I think we both love the aspect of researching and seeing what's going on because that's what we talk about a lot. Like in our private life, in our private time, it's always what's going on, what's happening. Oh like we God, like to be on top time. of everything. And I know for me, it would just be really cool if I, if I had a show or a 10, 15 minute little segment that I would look up and know, oh, I can get exactly what's going on. Yeah. You know, and I'll do that with Twitter. There's a lot on Twitter, though, and there's a lot of just negative stuff. Well, we, gotta, we also have to see where this goes mm-hmm. and really look at the comments and look at, um, you know, Certain things, there's going to be, it's simple. Yeah. I keep using the Coachella lineup. That's a very simple thing for us to look at, yeah. to read, to comment on a few of the people we know or don't know, or maybe we don't know six people we look up to and listen to their music, yeah. give our opinion on that, yeah. whatever it is. Um, the Golden Globes, we missed that. We should have did a who we think's going to win. We've seen most of the stuff, so that was a missed opportunity. Do, since we're releasing this tomorrow, is there anyone you think is going to come home a big winner? Because you've watched a lot of the stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Because yeah, no, the no. whole voting thing is, we've talked about it with even the Emmys. Like, I don't know if it's how it's all configured or how it's all done. Because I don't even really know what's... Every, everybody's great. Like, everything I've seen, like, how are you going to compete? Like, everyone is so good. Because mm-hmm. this is the big leagues. Yeah. Big leagues. I mean, Christian <laughs> I Bale and, like, who, he's, he's up for, I mean, you know, you got these just huge people. Um... So we'll see. So we'll see. We'll I, I think the Joker was phenomenal. You love um, that. Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, my God, it was such a good film. The Morning Show, I really hope, wins. Oh, that was wonderful. Um, but they might be against Big Little Lies, but maybe not. I'll I don't have know. to look at. We'll have to look at all of those. Yeah, but um, I didn't get a chance. But we'll see. I think it's going to go. I think it'll go over really well. But that's you know what what we want to kind of focus on. Um, we're not dropping anything no. this year. Every Just I think the past three, four years everything. we've we've kind of looked at it over Christmas and said, "Oh, we don't want to move forward with this. We don't want to move forward with this." But we're we're still heavily um, trying to get the the script made. Yep. Um, that's just a process in itself. Um, and then even too with the blog um, coming back from hiatus this week with everything, going to bring a lot more fashion forward type content as well. Yeah. Which I'm really, really stoked about. And, um, you know, TikTok, we're still rocking and rolling there. See what that ends up doing. Yeah, we're having I think fun. that'll be an interesting one just to watch yeah. because if it blows up, it'll be cool. Yeah. And if it fizzles out, um, you know, we learned some stuff, picked up some new audience members. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of like, that, that's just easy though. TikTok's easy, YouTube is hard work. <laughs> YouTube and blogging you have to commit. is hard work because there's so much that goes into it. But like Instagram is on autopilot for me. Yeah, it's so easy to do stories and take a few pictures and like people love it. Like I feel like I got that down. Instagram's great. I gotta be a little more vocal on Twitter. 
Um, That's the one I just don't know why I never hopped on it. I mean, I'm on it. And what's crazy is when I look at my time hop, 10 years ago, I was like tweeting all the time. I was like, who was I tweeting to? You know what I mean? Like I didn't have that many followers. And it was just, you know, what I was up to, traveling, going to this restaurant or whatever. Literally, Twitter would ask you, what are you doing? And I would respond, I am blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So embarrassing to look back at. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't. It's just not. My, it's not my platform in the sense that I just have more. I guess. I mean, obviously, millions of people are on there, and they they figure out a way to to make two sentences powerful and right. meaningful or funny or whatever. Um, but I, I just I for some reason I I it, and it maybe because it's writing. But I love to write. I, I don't Which know. Which is so interesting. It just doesn't resonate with me. Like I was, I tweeted today about like I'm excited for Ricky Gervais and the Golden Globes. Like I, think I am, the but main like thing that we're missing with Twitter, and this is what Gary Vee mentioned he did when he cocktail was, party. Yeah, it's a cocktail conversation. Party. You have to I, interjecting. look and see, like say you want to talk about the Golden Globes, you tweet or you look up Golden Globes, see what's happening, and then you start responding to people. And that's not usually but, my form of conversation. But, but, like, but why? I, exactly. Like, my whole thing is, like, Unless you like someone's going to go, Ricky Gervais that. is funny, Freddie. And I'm like, cool, we both think he's funny. Or someone's going to be like, he's the most offensive comic ever. And then you're going to have a back and forth about why so it is or isn't. it's a negative, I don't know. It's, I, don't, I guess I don't get the point. Out. I just know that I do have fans over there who who that's their primary social. Yeah. And I want to, you know, make sure they're all kept up on, like, hey, we have a podcast. Or, hey, like, totally. I'm watching the Golden Globes tonight. Maybe maybe people like to see that um but i do notice most of my tweets are more about the content we're creating where i think it's something if i'm going to continue to build on that platform it's more responding and seeing what's going on in literal just text we're not using it to its fullest content creator Uh um we're not using it correctly yep and it's it's good and we're doing good enough to let people know um but it's it's very like hey everyone on twitter just to let you know, yeah, I feel like with Instagram, it's like our last resort. Oh, let's post on here. Yeah, like Instagram and and YouTube, I feel people are really they they're getting substance from yeah, us. Yeah, definitely. You know, Twitter's kind of like, hey guys, just want to let you know, here's You're what's like, going on. Do you know on. how to use the platform? <laughs> but we like use it. We use enough, and it's just for some reason. It's another. I, I just at the moment, we'll see. Things could change. Yeah, we could change on it. But these are all the things that we were reflecting on. These are all video ideas that we were writing down the other day. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for the 2020, you know. Like, we don't have any, like, tr- like it's not a year of, uh, of luxury. Um, luxury, that's not what I meant to say. A year of, uh, yeah, luxury. Like, it's not a year of, like, oh, leisure. That was the word I was looking for. Um, you know, we're not going to, like, plan any, like, vacations or anything crazy. It's, it's just going to be a work year. You know, and still, uh, you know, nothing's in stone yet for uh, for days. Hmm. So I'm, I'm, you know, it's been the two week holiday. So right. I'm assuming this week we'll probably hear something of our start date. Um, we'll see. But that's it. Yeah, I'm just gonna do one health and take our content to the next level. And um, you know, the hail mary is is to sell the script. Yeah. You know, that's that's a like bow, like whoa. It's huge. You know, a big thing. Everything else we're going to build brick by brick. That being sold is you kind of get a house. Yeah. Every video, every podcast, every yeah. post, every tweet is brick by brick by yeah. brick by brick. And we've built something great. Yeah. We have like a one side of the house built. <laughs> but selling a script is like, oh, you can here's just have this one. Roof, yeah, it. here's this one next door that's already built. It, w- it would really uh, skyrocket everything. Um, we're working, baby. Level. We're doing everything we can. But and... I kind of don't care either way. I'm just at a point where I'm like, I want good. it, yeah, and I'm re- like putting everything into it, but I'm also not impatient about it. Like, I just think I'm we doing have a lot of different projects and things that we're working on that make me very happy. And yeah. So that's why I'm just enjoy. I truly am enjoying the process. Like they always say, enjoy the process. I get it because yeah. we're doing stuff that we enjoy. Yeah. You know, there's been stuff in the past where you're working on something and maybe your heart's not fully in it. That's a completely different feeling. Well, here, here's, and this is a little heady to end it here, but like another thing that we've, that we've talked about, or maybe I've talked about it in my own head or to Benji, <laughs> oh um, 
It's been very interesting, though, because when we were, when you have growing up, like when I first moved out here, there was kind of a, like you wanted to prove that you were making the right decision. Mm-hmm. You, you had no clout at all. And you had all of your friends, family, and everyone's making their decision in life. And you kind of had a responsibility and accountability Mm -hmm. for the first few years of like everybody who's just like trying stuff. And so I had all these people that weren't counting on me, but that I almost felt I needed to like be accountable to. I needed to show I was going to like do this thing. And then once you get a manager and an agent and acting class and publicist and commercial agents and all these people, now you have people that are also attached to your life in the sense of like, hey, like the agent wants you to book because it's their life and you have a team. And then once we started building businesses, we had thousands of people relying on us. Mm -hmm. And there becomes like, you can't just all of a sudden go, ah, it's like there's a process of change. Um, I feel like we have completely over the last couple years been able to move everything to the point that we, it's just you and I, yeah. and there's nobody that's relying on us. And after watching that Kevin Hart, another good one, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Kevin Hart's Don't F This Up on Netflix was great. But during his controversy of like the of the Oscar scam, mm-hmm. or the thing about the old tweet. He's had a lot of controversy. He had a lot, yeah. But this woman was like, you aren't just Kevin Hart who can just go on here and say, listen, I already apologized and whatever, blah, blah, blah. He, she goes, you're responsible for 60 people's well-being. Mm-hmm. All of his companies, all the people he pays, like he's responsible. And when we were in charge of leading hundreds of people on the daily, it gave me a glimpse into, I just don't know if I want to be a manager. Mm-hmm in life especially not now i might in the future we might start a tequila company when we're 47 and have a 1200 person organization around the world like who knows but i love the idea that we can try all these things and no one's affected by Hmm. our decisions we can start the podcast quit the podcast we can start a morning show we can start we can do anything if no one else is involved there's no pressure i love that we kind of have this freedom right now that even when you think about too with our lives, like there's a lot of people who want to try things and want to invest, but they got three kids. Mm-hmm. And they're like, ah, mm-hmm. if this fails, like that's their first year of college. Like we are have in 2020 right now, this moment, mm-hmm. there's nobody that's relying on us in the sense of finances. There's, there's, we, it's just you and I trying things. I love that. And there's that freedom. And I'm kind of staying away from, like even that was the whole thing when we were off on this break. People were like, "Are you like my accountant's like, well, why don't you get an agent and go audition?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Like mm-hmm. it just isn't. I don't want to be on call yet again. Of like, hey, you got to go to this audition, or hey, you have to do this thing. Like right now, I'm just like cool, like doing me. Mm-hmm. And if there's a way I can continue to do me in mm-hmm. life without being attached. But that's I think it's going to create more freedom and happiness for me, at least right now. I could look back on this and go, oh, wow. It, yeah. But at this moment, yeah, the beauty of living in 2020, having all of these opportunities as digital entrepreneurs, that's, I mean, it's unreal. You couldn't have done that or have that outlook 30 years ago. There's no way. Unless you were in, like, not digital, but still an entrepreneur, but then you're building a whole business and then you're going to have that um, pressure with, an entire organization. You couldn't really be alone. You couldn't do it. No. Now, the other day, I was at the grocery store, and there were just these very rowdy, louder, like, I'd say, teenagers. And I walked past um, some of the employees working there, and they're like, oh, yeah, they're really big YouTubers, and they're filming. And I was like, oh, God, I don't want to be on camera. But, I mean, that's the world we live in. Mm-hmm. They're, like, they're talking about YouTubers, people who take mm-hmm. videos on this and upload it. I mean, What? It's amazing. It's crazy. Well, because that's what it, and you're, and you're, I'm seeing like at the year end too on my YouTube, um, like the YouTube algorithm for my viewership is putting a lot of the videos that they know I'll like mm-hmm. in my homepage. Mm-hmm. And because it was the end of December or the end of the year, a lot of YouTubers were what I made, how much I made in 2019. Mm. And I kept seeing in a variety. Some yeah. people who made $30,000, which is a living yeah. on YouTube and others who made 20 million. Um, so it, it's just interesting that like Crazy. that we have the opportunity and it's something we like. 
Um, you know, I'm over the fact like there was even a, a point like three, four years ago where I remember thinking like we we have the skill set. Um, all real estate agents be like, you have no idea. But if I, I real I realistically believe real estate is all about communication and it's all about the people skills and yeah. it's all about how you make people feel and the work you do. We don't know businesses. we don't know the paperwork right. of real estate, right. but the actual people business of it, I think we'd be great at. But um, but I don't have a passion for it. I know we could make money part time. Yeah. yeah. But we're beyond that now. Yeah. I would never in a million years go do that just for money. <laughs> I just yeah. I'm only doing things that I want to do at this but point. I think that's important too to tell the universe that so that that's the energy you receive. This back. is what I want to do. This yeah. is what I want to do right now and um, and not owe anyone anything and uh, just to be accountable to our health and to our each other and be accountable to our audience that has been with us this whole time. So amazing. And can keep putting out good content for yeah. people to enjoy and to watch our journey. And I think as we continue to climb, we're going to hit a crescendo at one point. And it's going to be the most fun, I think, for people who've been watching us because they're going to see the journey. Mm-hmm. And it's been all gradual. Mm-hmm. But we're on the verge, whether it's in three months, six months, a year, two years, something that's going to to the new level that's going to be amazing to watch but we have the skill set of content documenting and creating Mm -hmm. that when it happens we're going to get it on tape or on or on digital or whatever i don't know i said tape but (laughs) people who aren't used to content creation who aren't don't have an instagram twitter youtube nothing Mm -hmm. and then they go and do something amazing and then maybe they start it's like well you didn't get to see the cool part Um, and then last thing which is going to be difficult to do but I really think would be nice is we need to record horizontally or put some GoPros around for certain moments in our life. I want to make a documentary of our 2020 yeah. and put it out. Because everyone, like three weeks ago, we were all writing what we accomplished and everything. But I was like, if I put everything down, it just feels like I read people who wrote down all their accomplishments and it just sounded like bragging. That's why I, and I was like, I can't do it. Yeah, I felt and weird. then I didn't want to reflect too much or make anything about like, let me flip it in moments that were depressing. And I'm like, that's depressing. <laughs> so I just didn't write anything. Yeah. But I felt like how cool would it have been to have an hour and 20 minute documentary that we made, like not professionally, but right. just all this footage that we could have put behind the scenes right. and released it at the end of the year could be really cool Um, but we got to just go the extra mile again by ourselves to like record big moments in our life this year and put it together is knowing like if we get a specific email or a phone call or a meeting or you know just we we know the big events when we're going and doing them so might as well record it yeah you know yeah I, i think that's what it is is just collect all the footage and i can't worry about a narrative no, we'll I gotta see. just put it together in a folder, stiff through it, yeah. at the end of the year, and that would be really cool. But um, we had to record the Golden Globes, so let's <laughs> wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Well, guys, uh, happy twenty twenty! We're excited for this upcoming year and all of our new projects. And we love to hear from you. If you guys have any ideas or things you want to see more of, yeah, comment below. Let, let us, us know. know. And um, we'll be back uh, next week. So have yeah. a good week. Take care. <laughs>